yeah. here too. Uh, Steven Prusa is playing a reanimator. Yeah. It's a pretty standard looking uh, reanimator list with the exception of its choice of fatties where it's got one behemoth, one Thundermaw Hellkite, one Gristlebrand, and one Gisela Blade of Good Knight. Gold Knight. <laughs> Good Blade <night>. of Good Knight. <laughs> That's my own uh, personal saying there. Uh, with four Angel of Serenity, obviously, also included. Uh, Thundermaw Hellkite. Whoa, we might have we might have some game here. So, bird tokens down. Yep. But Bassam is sitting on a vault and a pike. Looks like his Soren just died. The Angel is staying back on defense, though. <laughs> Deathrite Shaman. Ooh, Deathrite Shaman, obviously good against the Enchanter Spike. I see one Soren Emblem in play. I'm not sure if, I don't think there's a die on it, so no. I guess we just have one. Still, pretty dangerous, and uh, <clears throat> Vault plus Pike could become a pretty big problem in short yeah. order. Well, Pike plus the Lifelink token alone is. Yes, that's true. It'll race the Thunder while Hulkite down, assuming Very easily. Bassum's played spells. <laughs> yeah, assuming Bassum does things. Uh, uh, he seems to be considering his options. Probably means he has a lot. Uh, Bassam's deck also featuring Snagcaster Mage Geist of St. Traft as its other plan. Uh, we saw him earlier get Bonfire, then come back with a Fateful Hour to gather the Townsfolk into an Azorius Charm. That got... Yeah, there's also wow. a Sword Emblem. Yeah, he got Bonfire down to two against zombies and just... Gained 10 Yeah, the other, his opponent was just like you and <laughs> didn't kill the Sword. The Soren made an emblem, uh, or made a vampire, ten, or five power of Talisman were made. The, his opponent makes a Nighthawk, Bassum attacks uh, Bassum back down with the okay. Knight, and then like Bassum just untaps, makes an emblem, gains ten, and just suddenly wins the game from him. Despite being at two with Knight of Infamy facing down a bunch of white tokens. Wowzers. So we see a Drowned Catacombs tapped. Bassum counting, I believe. One, two. Yeah, not, uh, that might not be an issue. Might hope. I think. It, all right. Yeah. We so might that's only have probably one or two. the problem. That is a big problem as well. I agree. He might be debating whether to shove in and vault. He's gonna go ahead and equip his Geist, and I think that means he may be passing. If that's what oh, he could also be trying to set up the play of attack with Geist every turn, give it mm -hmm. first strike, death punch. Right. All of the combos. That will certainly, that will be able to race as well, but it's not quite as efficient as the token, which just keeps on chugging. Sure. Uh, that said, you're, you're dealing a lot more, even if you're not spending. Yeah, I efficient. mean, the thing is that uh, Steven can set up chump blocks on the token. Yeah. Rolling Templar. Oh, Rolling oh. Templar. That's not good. The one of Rolling Templar. Yep, that's uh, one of our post-board specials from the Reanimator player. Uh, he's apparently trying, trying to death to right after you're rolling Templar, and it was like resolved, now you yeah. get death right. So I just, the so conversation happens. down. Yeah. Once but, you play your spell and your opponent allows it to resolve, you can't try and activate anything else. That's not how the priority yeah. passing You don't get the pass priority, then get it yeah. again. So, creature's down. Uh, Bassin down to 10 life. But he could <laughs> still just draw Lingering Souls and get back in it. I think one of his cards in hand is a second copy of Geist, if I saw it correctly. Okay. That. I'm not sure about what else he's got going on. It looks like a Snapcaster. Snapcaster. So it might be Snapcaster Geist. I'm not 100% on that being a Geist. But... Ooh. This Snapcaster could mean business, though. Yeah, if he... Uh, I don't know if he could possibly deal 8 here, but he might be able to do enough to dissuade another attack. He might just be able to gain life and stay yeah. alive. Attacking and vaulting <clears throat> is not the stone worst. If he'd drawn a land here, right? Like, Yeah. That well, would be a lot he better. drew another pike, which is one instant short of lethal. That's rough. Yeah. <laughs> looks like pike snapcaster, I think I just saw before. Yeah. I think that that's what hand. he's on. But it looks like we're going to have to vault and gain. Oh, it's one short of lethal because of the sword and emblem. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. One short. So we, I think we can attack just for two and vaults. Go three. to 12. Three. three, yeah, yeah, for three and go to 13. And then try to do this like same line next turn and just hope he has nothing. Well, we don't have the seventh mana because he has the Rolling Templar in Graveyard to flash back and kill. Sure. But, I mean, I don't think any of our other lines are... Well, I think all of our other no, lines No, this is our only line us, that keeps so. us alive, yes. <laughs> yeah. We have one play. 
Uh, we should definitely have left open a blue mana. Our opponent doesn't know we don't have something like random like unsummon. Yeah, sure. But probably not going to matter much since we don't have unsummon. Uh, or is it salvage? Ooh, this might this might put it away. He's just going to take I like, think it's an untapped land away. and an angel. If he has an untapped land left. Well, he also he's... has a Thrag Tuscan hand. Does he? Oh, well, then that's yeah. a lot better than the untapped land, probably. Just a little. Just a wee bit. A smidgen. So it looks like we can get it to a third game. Uh, one thing I'm looking, Vassam's deck features Syncopate and Negate. We no Cavern Souls out of uh, Steven's deck. That's true. He is opting, he's got, he's got the Slayer Stronghold, which uh, sort of has fallen in and out of favor. Oh, well, he has one copy of Cavern. Oh, really? He has a Singleton, yep. Did not see that. Actually, we just saw it in the Salvage, now that I think about it. Uh, Bossum, unsurprisingly, was not able to put game. that one together. Uh, it looked okay from the first turn. Yep. When was that down, like, it, it looked, looked like a somewhat game. okay from the second turn. But that sequence of Hellkite and the Temple are killing all of your creatures. Yeah. yeah. Getting Plague Winded multiple times in a row is only not once. The best. It was half Plague Wind plus half Plague Wind. That's that's fair. Yeah, it was basically just yeah. uh, reverberating or whatever. It was kind of like a bonfire of the dam. Kind of. <laughs> well, it didn't. I guess it killed the Planeswalker. So yeah, it was yeah. a bonfire. The Thunderball was pretty close. Yeah. So we got game three going out over here. Bossom appears to <clears throat> perhaps be revisiting his sideboard. Yeah. I believe these players are X1 right now. Yes. So uh, a win here, not a lock for top eight. And given the size of this tournament, I actually have no idea what, a, what actually locks top eight. Nine beyond one. straight up undefeated. And nine, yeah, yeah, nine one for sure. But yeah. I, I'm saying like, I don't know if some people will be able to draw, no people will be able to draw. I believe almost- All people will be able to draw. I believe it'll be almost all nine ones with maybe an 802. Maybe an 811 if, like, they get 801 and then pared down or something. Okay. Wow, but that's crazy. But, like, it's going to be very close to just straight cut at 9 one. It's a big, big room. A lot of, lot of people. Yes. A rarity for <clears> the, uh, not for the Midwest, which is one of the places we get the, the biggest open, yes. actually, out here. Ohio, Indianapolis, uh, even Illinois. Like, we get a lot of people in all of these venues. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Anywhere, you know, you're drawing from so many people. Yep. Uh, like Indianapolis, you, you just named all these cities, but <laughs> each of these cities is like, yeah, how far is it to the next one? Uh, four hours? Let's just go. I mean, I know from Detroit, uh, I was PTQing in Chicago, in uh, Indianapolis, Columbus, Cincinnati, Pittsburgh, you know, every season like it wouldn't be uncommon that you play a ptq season where every single weekend there was just a ptq you go to sounds wonderful I i'm from florida that was not a luxury we enjoyed uh yeah. one, one. 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 So, that's not true we usually got two <laughs> and then moto <laughs> and they were like on the complete opposite ends of florida so it's just like six hours both ways or something crazy like yeah we, we drive to alabama and georgia sometimes too but those are always just rough, rough yeah. drives fair enough yeah, I'm, I'm very envious of a lot of the people in the central, yeah. central America. I mean, obviously, I moved from the Midwest to the Northeast, which is like, yeah, there's a PDQ like four hours away this weekend. Yeah. There's one like one hour away next weekend. You know, they're all their own states. They each deserve their they own PDQs. They do. PTQs. They do each deserve. I've actually, I've been considering going up into those Northeast PDQs a little bit. I, I, I go about as high as Philly. That's where my... Cutoff is? My cutoff <clears throat> is, personally, but That's, I... That is not the Northeast. I don't have that much time. Philly is like borderline northeast all right well then there you go that's that's as far as i go yeah i get to play in a few a, a year i think i played in a total of four maybe five last year really PTQs. yeah okay. i think that's how many i assume that this whole traveling thing i don't know. yeah i'm usually busy on the weekends i uh, think i don't know where the time goes really. <laughs> i played in two pdqs three pdqs last year uh i conceded in the top four to a friend in one of them I went X2 in another, and then I won the third. So, good record. Reasonable. <clears throat> reasonable record. Yeah. Reasonable. Uh, my friend went to... It was actually a really sick... Uh, the PDQ top four for that one was like the first modern one of last season. It was like three Star City writers, and my friend who would consistently like sit next to me and discuss things as I wrote my articles. <laughs> 
Yeah, it was uh, Chris Anderson and John Agley, I believe. Okay, okay. Yeah, Chris ended up winning that and qualifying for Barcelona and having a miraculous run then fall. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like so many in Barcelona. So Basim leads on an isolated chapel tap. Just like think a few weeks, that'll be a goddess shrine. <laughs> yes. And Steven has a turn one duress off an overgrown tomb. Looks like that has the option of negate, Azorius charm, face shield, or soaring. Face shield against uh, the reanimator deck is a little interesting. Uh, uh, I don't think I like it very much, to be Yeah, honest. I don't know how I feel about that one. Like saving... It can push through... Uh, it can save a Geist, it can push through stuff. Yeah, but Geist is like so tough to get through in this matchup anyway. Why? Between like Huntmasters and Thragtos? Or I guess he only has two Huntmasters. It's possible that Basim Even just has a Even Lingering to some extent. Sure. Oh, I guess he does that forward back. Yeah. I don't know. Takes uh, the Sorin, the only threat. Yep. So he's gonna make Basim put something else together. Through a Swamp. Now, interestingly, uh, the Fate Shield is permanent, correct? Yes. So uh, it can actually be used to protect Soren from combat damage, which this is got a, brought a up lesser earlier. known trick. Yep. Oh, okay. Well, in that case, I guess it's not that lesser known anymore. We just we told uh, some 4,000 people earlier. So, Mulch reveals Temple Garden and three cards that don't care about Mulch. Yep. And I don't think there were any big creatures yeah, in there exactly. either, so. Oh, Basim Drew is close. Clone's a spicy one. I like this. I like the clone. Uh, yeah, I played against a really sweet deck on Magic Online the other day that I'll uh, talk about a bit more once we get out of the game. Sure. Clones and Clone Effects and Sander are actually quite good. Right now. I agree. Uh, so Deathrite Shaman hits play for Steven. No real targets yet. But Bassam's deck's pretty loaded. It is a Snapcaster Mage deck, so. Yep. Bassam cycling this Azorius Charm finds an attention sphere. Um, do you think he uses it on the Shaman, or...? I don't know, uh, maybe. His opponent's not doing much, and the Shaman is gonna goof up his plans. For the oh. long game, reasonably significantly. Sure. I think he really I... just wanted another sword right there. <laughs> yeah, obviously. The best thing you could ever draw. He is playing four of them for a reason. We put the cards in our deck so that we can draw them. That, that's what you use to justify it whenever you miracle someone, right? That's how I justify it when I do anything to anyone. <laughs> ah, I see. So, yep, there is a detention sphere coming out on that shaman. Okay. I'm not especially for or against this. I think it's yeah. just, like, reasonable. It kind of depends on what's going on. We're, we won't really know if it was good or bad for several so, turns. There's that mulch shop temple garden coming to play tapped. Yep. That's some draws. Thought Scour. Reload. Do we get to... There we go. Oh, look at that. The combo. Thought Scour Lingering Souls. Paid. And we hit another land. He had that. Oh, we had the island? Okay. I believe so. Ladies and gentlemen, well, let's get some spirit tokens up in here. So he's uh, he still has his negate, correct? So there's yep. Lingering Souls probably sticking around for a little while. Negate, unless we'll thought, he drew another Thought Scour. Oh, okay. So, yep. We don't want to see Thunder Mahal Guide. Well, it's a singleton, so what are the odds? Another death ray shaman, uh, whatever. We've got some threats. Thought scour again. To land. Have you ever thought scoured yourself on turn one and hit a lingering souls? Yes, I have. It's I've done it exactly once in my life. Same. It's such a cheating feeling. Like I did you're just it like, oh the, uh, wait, what? The DC standard open. I think it was against Javier Arval. I'm not sure. Yeah. I did it deep in the Detroit standard open. It was just like, oh my gosh. So good. Yeah. Just like against some green creature deck, just start beating them down with souls on turn two. It looks like we have a syncopate available now, so uh, we can keep these tokens in play for a little while if we want to. Untapped Hollow Fountain. Paying two. This is kind of going to probably inform our opponent as to what we've got available. Not a lot of reasons to pass with four up in the token deck. Sure. Yeah, passing with just the full amount up. Yeah, paying two here seems a little... Steven's going to smell something in the kitchen. <clears throat> Aggressive? I'd be kind of putting my opponent on a rewind more than a syncopate in that spot, but... Sure. Maybe a Restoration Angel if I just didn't think he had it, but... Oh, Steven has no cavern, that Restoration Angel probably not making it. Yeah, syncopated. X equals two. Okay. 
even down to 16. Probably gonna start taking away some instance, uh, take out some pike value, take out some snapcaster mage value. Probably the single paint, right? I think I would get a single paint. It's it's the hardest thing in the in the graveyard, but yeah. Perhaps he assumes he'll just be able to get the syncopate in response to any shenanigans later. Cavern. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> wow, the one cavern, that could be pretty dangerous. So we're going to need to figure out well, what he named with that one. It's not on time, though. That's not on time. He already uses Counterspell. Yes. He only has two more syncopates in his deck. And this one in his graveyard, as you said, Snapcaster Mage is not live with the death rate in play. Okay. So it's very possible that, like, this cavern just showed up one turn too late. What did we draw? It's Soren. Is this a Soren? It's a Soren. It is a Soren. Wow. <clears throat> Soren's a big game here. We've he got starts negate. At three, correct? Uh, yeah, he starts at three. And with negate to take care of Bonfire of the Damned, really it's just that Thunderbolt Hell card, pretty much. Yeah. Or M1? perhaps an end step restoration. We're going into the claw. Although uh, we do have we're, that. We're oh, generating a We even have that Faith Shield. Oh. We, God, we've got like the full wrap on this sword. Yeah, He's not exactly. going anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Looks like there's an abrupt decay. Uh, abrupt decay. Side. Uh, this is an odd card to even have in our deck still. I mean, I guess it kills Pike. Yeah, it kills Pike. Are we out of answers? Do we have no other ones? I guess that's reasonable. Then. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Face shield. That uh, will, in fact, counter that <clears throat> ability. Yeah. So to speak. <laughs> this not counterable spell. Yep. Not happening. So Steven drops down to, looks like, 10, taking out the face shield. Interesting. I think that one's reasonable. I would, I would probably take the face shield before the sink of faith. Okay. It's one of the more easier cards to Shaman takes out the uh, Soren. Angel takes out the tokens. Oof. This game uh, turned around real fast. But, no, no. This is where the clone comes into play. Clone is a, a sizable game. Yeah. Clone. Kill your dudes. Now, I'm curious why Boston's running clone, clone over Evil Twin. Yeah. Uh, I, I would think, be much so, happier yeah. than Evil Twin right now, I think. So, I think that, that may be a card that he just forgot existed. Yeah. Uh, like, that's not a card that most people think about. Uh, I only remembered it because of the deck that you know, I was playing against. I was going to talk about it a bit in a second. Because it's oh, well, really, well, it's I don't really spoil sweet. It. I don't want to spoil really it. Really sweet. All right. Uh, I don't know if it's actually good, but it did some really awesome things. Suffice to say, uh, I think that would be... Well, we just took eight or two, to four, four, eight. So we have a, a crater. Okay. Okay. I was a little more concerned when I thought it might be a Gisela. That costs seven. Oh, it does? Yeah. Okay. So, six, six, Crater Hoof takes Basso down to six. Yeah, I, I'm not surprised by his decision to not block. He's winning this race. Yeah, six, six, or he just threw a Snapcaster. That's probably enough at this, at this juncture. Yep. So Basso's just quickly doing the, rate, the math on the race, double-checking yeah. the graveyard. There's nothing there. He's not dead to the Crater Hoof's attack even, so really just Snapcaster for Syncopate will counter a lot of things. Yeah, and the Negate in hand. Yep. So he pretty much has everything covered. Can't be, unless we don't know what the, is it on Angel maybe on the cavern? I assume it's on Angel, right? Like, so that's, he has four Angel of Serenity and plus a Gisela. It is yeah. on Angel, so that is uh, his card that he's hit. Yeah, we're gonna go to three, right? Nothing else can kill us? Oh, we're... We're Snapcastering. Targeting. Warrior's Charm, putting it on top. Okay. All right, I, I guess that's fine, too. Uh, I actually don't like that, because I think that may have killed him if he had a Lingering Souls. Sure. I guess you could maybe not be the Lingering Souls. You can negate one half of it, I guess? Yeah. Fair. 